2 Corinthians 7, 8 through 10 says, For though I caused you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it, though I do regret it. For I see that the letter caused you sorrow, though only for a while. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorrowful, but you were made sorrowful to the point of repentance. For you were made sorrowful according to the will of God, so that you might not suffer loss in anything through us. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world just produces death. Well, if you're joining us in reading through the 60-day reading plan, today's reading is 2 Corinthians chapters 6 and 7, and I encourage you to read that passage. Well, sometimes the consequences of church discipline brings about sorrow. But this is godly sorrow, and it also brings with it the opportunity for repentance and restoration of the believer to the community. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul addressed a situation in the Corinthian church that not only was causing it to lose its witness, but also had the capacity and the capability of destroying the church. He pronounced a very severe judgment on both the church and the young man, who was committing the sin. He told the Corinthians that their acceptance of this young man's sin was beyond the pale and that he needed to step in to correct that situation. Well, this caused grief in the Corinthian church, and so Paul writes concerning that grief. Grief with the goal of repentance always brings a possibility of restoration. That's the whole purpose of church discipline. When we confront those who have sinned grievously and possibly flaunted that sin, we're not only protecting the local church, but also protecting the believer by bringing them to a sense of reality. Now, our world today seems to say that we have to accept anything and everything in addition to that which we have no ability to judge anyone's actions. The concept is, I'm a sinner and you're a sinner, and therefore we cannot judge one another. Well, frankly, this is a completely bogus argument. Yes, it is true that all of us are sinners, but the judgment that we are executing is not a judgment condemning someone to hell, but rather a judgment bringing them back to a relationship with Christ. Now, whether it's the issue of homosexuality, living together in a sexual relationship, adultery, lying, or anything else, frankly, Unless we confront it in love and address it in love, we run the risk of destroying that which we love, our relationship with Christ and the other believers in our local community or church. We cannot tolerate open and consistent sin. We cannot accept open and consistent sin. All of us sin, and we are all aware of that, and we should be in a constant state of repentance. But when someone hardens their heart so that they will not repent, judgment out of love with the goal of restoration is our goal. 